Hi, my name is Seth Manukin, and I will be reading from my new book, The Panic Virus, A True Story of Medicine, Science, and Fear. On April 22, 2006, Kelly Lasik looked around her dinner table and smiled. Dan, her husband of 13 years, was there, along with the couple's three children, Ashley, Matthew, and Stephen. Kelly's parents had also come over. There was a father-daughter dance at the local church that evening, and Kelly and her dad were double dating with Dan and Ashley. As the four of them were getting ready to leave, Kelly couldn't resist needling her mother. You're stuck with the boys, she said, but don't worry, we won't be out too late. She kissed Stephen goodbye and then bent down to say goodnight to Matthew. He was three years old, and Kelly marveled at how quickly he was growing up. It seemed as if it was only moments ago that he'd been an infant, and now he was already being toilet trained. Dan and Kelly both agreed that it was adorable how proudly he announced that he had to go to the bathroom. For a brief moment, Kelly says, she wondered if Matthew was okay. He seemed a little out of sorts, and earlier that afternoon he'd complained of a sore throat. But then she figured he'd probably just tired himself out wrestling with his older brother. Kelly and Dan returned home that night around 8 o'clock. They'd barely walked in the door when Kelly's mother rushed over. It's Matthew, she said. He's running a fever, and his breathing seems a little shallow. The Lasix realized right away that something was seriously wrong. He was just sort of hunched over, Kelly says. We didn't know what to do. Since there was no way to get in touch with Matthew's doctor, they decided to make the 10-minute drive from their home in Monroeville, about 15 miles east of Pittsburgh, to the Forbes regional campus of the Western Pennsylvania Hospital. When the Lasix arrived at the emergency room, the attending physician told them there was nothing to worry about. In all likelihood, he said, Matthew had a case of strep throat. Worst case scenario, it was asthma. Regardless, they'd be home in no time. Two hours later, they were feeling much less assured. Matthew's fever had, was still rising, and when a doctor tried to swab his throat, he began to choke. By 11 p.m., Matthew's temperature had risen to 104 degrees, and his breathing seemed to be growing shallower by the minute. It was around that time that a doctor the Lasix hadn't met before walked over. He was older, probably in his 60s, Kelly thought, and as soon as he saw Matthew, he began to suck nervously on his teeth. He turned to the Lasix. Had Matthew received all his shots? Actually, Kelly said, he hadn't.